Damien Sanatier, the shadow runner better known as Geppetto, loathed summer. Summer was hot, summer was bright, and during summer, the schools were out, so all the insipid salarymen polluted the streets, parks, and other valuable public spaces of the city with their disgusting maggots. Geppetto hated heat, he hated light, and most of all, he hated children. Even before Head contracted vampirism, Summer had occupied a special, barren little grave in the clump of black coal colloquially referred to as his heart. 2D had once told him that he was not alone, because Summer brings out the new fags. Geppetto didn't entirely understand what this assertion meant, but he appreciated the sentiment nevertheless. At least as much as a sociopath could appreciate anything. Holy fuck said dervish looking out the pub side window yesterday's acid rain cleared out all the smog i can actually see the sky no way said bend peering out from beside dervish god bless america said wildcard in his scottish brogue let's bring a cooler up to the roof to celebrate as his three teammates all made for the roof access stairs geppetto glowered from his seat at the end of the bar come on geppetto a little sun won't hurt you called bend cheerily, as he grabbed a Japanese import beer from behind the bar. Live a little. As Geppetto produced his black funerary parasol and followed the team with a grimace. He remarked that a little son won't hurt you was the most damnable lie ever told in the history of me to humankind. Shadow run story time. This one's going to be pretty short but sweet, since I have a game club event to run in 2 hours. Also, I do remind people of this each time, but the 4chan format autosages story time thread since it does not like single IPs posting large amounts of material. So feel free to keep a running commentary. Also, sorry for not getting to it yesterday like I promised. The art above is to make up for that. Slaint cried wildcard, lifting his mask long enough to throw down a gulp of ale. You gotta leave that thing on all the time, wildcard, Bend nursed his own beer, recalling the Buddhist attitude on excess. Spirituality was a new thing for him, and he was just as unnerved by the serene, monkish spirits that seemed to conglomerate around him as his teammates were. Gota. All my tools are in here, said wildcard, his voice becoming synthesized and metallic again as he slipped the mask back down. Maybe nice and bright out, but I run intel for this team, and I am not much use if I don't keep abreast of what's going on. Even off duty. There was a brief pause, and then a harsh metal ringing as wildcard began guffawing aloud. Geppetto stood in the shadow of an adjacent building, with his parasol held above him and his hat slung low over his forehead. Something we should know about, wildcard? Wildcard spread his arms wide, opening up a large air window. Well... Media got a hold of this in a crack, didn't they? The third page of the day's XAF special action report bore a lovingly detailed 360 degree tread pick of a balaclava wearing dervish being taste in the middle of the forehead and falling through a table. Full of Chinese food, with the pudgy off duty cop standing across from him, his mustache raised in a smile of righteous sadism. The bulletin read hero cop Joseph Green saves innocent restaurant goers. As the rest of the team fought down Snickers, dervish growled. We need a job. Otherwise I don't know why I am hanging around you chucklefax. With flawless timing and the tapping of high heels, Brianna McCreary poked her head out of the roof access stairway door. Are you four going to just laze around all day? I called you down here because it netted you a Johnson, not so you could contemplate summer's lapsing beauty on my damn roof. Thank you, God, drawled Geppetto, as he stepped into the stairwell and closed his parasol. Mr. Johnson, smiled Geppetto. What a surprise. Geppetto and the Johnson shared a quick embrace before they sat at the pizzeria table. The Johnson was a familiar one, the squat. Pudgy Irish Mafia member whom had once upon a time asked 2D and Dervish to take care of a gang called the Pheromones Shadow Run Story Time 1 Geppetto was familiar with the man from Finnegan. Family functions, but didn't use his real name out of courtesy. Good to see you, Geppetto my boy, said Mr. Johnson with a grin that was mostly lip, as he began greedily pouring out a glass of red wine. And good to see you picked yourself up a quality new member. Wildcard's got quite the history with the family. Wildcard nodded with a small smile and poked at an order of bread and olive oil. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, said Geppetto with a predatory, canine smile, back in his element. Since we have such a good history, I think it would serve us well to just get down to business, rolled it? Well funny, that, said Mr. Johnson, swirling his wine, the job's actually fairly relevant to your new acquisition. 
Izzy, we need you to rob a bank. Wildcard blinked and looked up at Mr. Johnson as Geppetto beamed. That sounds doable, Mr. Johnson. Any particulars? It's a Wells Fargo in the Nan, about a day's drive to the southeast, in Nan territory. Little town in Clark County. We need you to extract some very important papers from the safe deposit boxes. Geppetto pent his fingers together. What kind of papers, Mr. Johnson? Bonds. American, pre ucus Worth a fortune in this day and age. And payment? I am offering 10k plus whatever else you can take from the safe deposit boxes. It's not a milk run, but my sources assure me that the holder of the bonds doesn't know that thief been targeted. That's not really much insurance for a payment that mostly depends on the willingness of the rich to place their investments in an ignominious small town bank, Mr. Johnson. You're sure you can offer 30? Johnson smiled, catching on to Geppetto's meaning. I can meet you halfway. Deal? Geppetto stood and reached over the table to shake Mr. Johnson's hand. Deal. Any more info you can get us? Layout? Security procedures? The Johnson just sort of stared blankly at Geppetto. It's a Wells Fargo, Geppetto. Wildcard quickly donned his mask and brought up a Google Maps image of the neighborhood, identifying the bank from its photos. Oh, it's a B5 model. Early 2060s. One of four or five variations, depending on if you count the reinforced version of the C2 as a separate floor plan. Deposit boxes are in the back, next to the spider's office. Gonna have to watch out for spirit security, not too worried about the matrix since most of these boxes haven't had their hardwired systems upgraded. Johnson slapped Geppetto's back, causing the slight banshee to jerk forward. This fucking guy. The day after the Johnson meet, the team had something akin to a short summer road trip. It was one of those scenic freeway drives away from the sun that would totally be part of a coming of age movie. With the credits rolling over a red hot chili peppers song and the protagonist saying something like, and then I knew everything would be okay after all. Except it was totally actually four professional criminals headed down to Clark County, Washington, to rob a bank, and not a coming of age movie at all. Still, it was a nice drive. Very calming. Wildcard even deigned to exceed the speed limit by only two figures rather than three. Dressed in their civilian clothes and noshing on chicken sandwiches at a Dairy Queen across the street from the bank, Dervish and Ben clicked on their subvical mics. Wildcard was sitting in the car in VR in a nearby parking lot, and Geppetto was entering the bank to make a withdrawal from one of his fake Sims accounts. The better to record the interior with his networked contact lenses. Dolby slots on the outside, remarked Ben, eyeing the unremarkable mush that was his veggie burger or, rather, veggie burger with suspicion. Probably don't deploy them till night, though, and Dobies are pretty easy to evade if they're stock model. Wildcard nodded unconsciously, even though nobody could see him. Most of these banks don't bother. Dobies are gobshite drones anyway, they mostly use them for perimeter and as a warning. Still, when we come back tonight, well let him take a few rounds, try to get the timing down. Hey Wildcard, Geppetto remarked, as he plugged his cred stick into an ATM, you getting this layout? Yeah. Thanks, Geppetto. No need to go round back, this is simply confirmation that they haven't changed the interior. Alright, lem put up a map for all of you so we can run through the plans. Geppetto, if you don't mind, ascense the place before you pop out. General astral security protocol on these places is just the one spirit, but they might have sprung for two. Roger, said Geppetto, opening his third eye. After a moment. He commented, yeah, got a hermetic man spirit drifting through the walls. Seems to be on a fixed rotation. At night they'll probably have it running counter to the Dobermans, shore up the blind spots. Which gives us a very, very small window to work, smaller than it'd like. Only you and Bend can even see spirits, too, so even if I get the cameras, I can't warn you when it's coming. We could always kill it, grunted Dervish, over a literal pile of chicken burgers his modified metabolism kicking in. Negative, said Bend, eventually deciding to take a bite of his veggie burger and immediately regretting it. We kill the spirit, the mage knows. And then backup rides in. Right up our ass, agreed Wildcard. Any ideas for an in-cap, gentlemen? One, said Bend, but he'll need a ride to the nearest Pirabotanist. Geppetto chuckled as he exited the bank. Haven Lily? Really, Bend? It worked on us. Wildcard took a brief moment to look up Haven Lily on the Matrix. 
We're going to stop the spirit by getting it stoned? That's the idea. Bloody brilliant. Ill drive. The team returned to their stakeout bearing, for lack of a better word, a shrubbery. It hadn't been hard to purchase Geppetto had popped into the Merlin's chapter house and a fellow member, Mars, had referred him to a relevant botanist. Though a suspicious purchase, Haven Lily was not technically illegal, and Merlin's business offered a fairly convincing part in the punt maker screamed for what the plant was going to be used for. On the drive back, Wildcard ran the team through the possible options. So, this sort of bank's got two back doors. One leads to a reinforced hallway that connects the vault room and spider room. The other is the normal back door, but you can get to the reinforced hallway from the inside, too. Thiel probably have dubbies and the like patrolling the hallway, so we'll need to get me into the spider room first. Which is a problem, since that'll mean going through the very hallway that the spider's monitoring. Invisible suggested Geppetto. Negative. You'll still need to open the door, and the spider to notice. Really dude? It's a well known error. Trying to rephrase this for no evil objectionable material before I bounce, so I don't just get banned later. We could try to drill our way in, offered Bend. He gestured to Wildcard's duffel bag full of tools, which sat snugly in the back of the car. The security room's up against the back wall. With the right tools we could probably bust in even before the Doberman's round the corner. That'll be way too much noise on our hands, Wildcard shook his head. Well. With a snap, Geppetto activated a silent spell. The car engine went so quiet that for a moment Wildcard thought it had died. Good man, good man. The rest of the team discussed the plan as Geppetto slipped around the back of the bank and carefully hid the Haven Lily behind the external generator, outside of where the patrolling drone would be able to see. That's one security measure taken care of, so we're going with the drill plan, right? I go gaseous, flow through the hole, plug you in. This is the only time that I am going to thank my lucky stars to be running with a banshee, so enjoy it, Geppetto, remarked Wildcard taking a close look at what data he could manage from sniffer scans. Bend, the vault door and the drones are off the network. You sure you can dodge the drones and trick the door? It's got a full retinal thumbprint suite. I've got spy tools to spoof both of those, commented Bend. Just erase me from the cameras. That I can do. That night, as the employees cleared out and two drones deployed on the outside of the bank and began a circular patrol, the silence was punctuated briefly by the whine of a power drill that swiftly became silent. Ben and Geppetto, tack suited and rendered invisible respectively, sprinted for the outside wall of the spider room, beside a dumpster, as soon as the drone passed. Bend carried the decoded power drill, while Geppetto trailed a long black data jack extension cord, connected two dozen yards away to their hacker's cranial ports. Wildcard was zonked out in VR in his car, while Dervish kept a watch for passing cars, pedestrians, and whatnot. Wildcard commented over the team's tack net. You have 30 seconds till the next drone, gentlemen. Make it count. Bend slid to a stop at the side of the building, immediately deploying the drill at about foot level. The concrete of the exterior wall gave way quickly, although the two did have to make a quick dive behind the dumpster as one of the drones rounded the corner. Another 30 seconds. Keep drilling. Bend took the drill to the wall again, and this time he hit open space. Leaving the drill atop the dumpster for Geppetto to retrieve on his way out. Bend slipped the extension cord through the hole and then made for the hard and external door to wait for Wildcard to open it. Geppetto melted into a noxious green gas and flowed through the hole, finding himself at the foot level of the spider, sitting at his nexus. As Geppetto flowed past his feet and rematerialized behind him, he noticed that the spider was watching a Rathaflevifal scene involving two male orcs and a female elf on one of the nexus screens. Idiots watching porn, Geppetto hissed over the subvocals, we could have just walked in. Don't get cocky, Geppetto, Wildcard responded, scolding. Just plug me and then get out. Your part's done. Dervish snickered. What is it, spotter? Don't get, never mind. Grumbling, Geppetto plugged the cord loosely into the Nixa so that it could be disengaged with just one quick snag and reel back and, for good measure, hit it with an invisibility spell. Even if it was just a thin black cord, that alone could be suspicious when leading back to the car. Urine, wildcard. Get hacking. Our spirit out. Geppetto passed by the generator as he fled with the drill, taking a cursory moment to identify a hermetic spirit of man hovering aimlessly in space by the lily, giggling and doing loop-de-loops. It's gone. 
Alright, this may take a few hours, especially dodging the spider. Even if he is distracted. Bend, Gecko grip your way up to the roof above the doorway, keep out of the drone sight while you wait. 10-4. Bend sat atop the doorway and watched the drones pass by in their endless rounds as wildcard hacked. Two hours later, there was a low clack noise as the locks disengaged. Yuren, bend. I've got the camera's looping footage, but watch out for the drones. There's another doby to dodge on the floor in there. Then I won't use the floor. Swiveling to open the door while upside down, Bend used his gecko pads to crawl along the ceiling of the hardened hallway, crawling directly above the Doberman as it rolled along the hallway. It's camera and submachine gun scanning the space. He didn't stop until he hit the vault, at which point he flipped down from the ceiling. I think the vault door itself is a blind spot on the drone's ordinary patrol, but he'll try to make this quick. Cinching up with wildcard to grab some employee biometrics, Bend deployed his tools to spoof a false retinal scan and identification. He slid his specially prepared maglet passkey into the it slot, hoping that the inbuilt algorithms would defeat the door. After a brief moment of holding his breath, he heard the richer chutting pinging noise of multiple locks disengaging. I am in. Bloody good show. Grab the bonds, then anything you can. You got the duffel bag? Yep. Hell and a half hiding it from the drone though. Whatever. Time's money, and money's in the vault. Take anything that's not nailed down. With a little help from Wildcard over the tack nut, Bend quickly identified which bonds were the correct ones, and then proceeded to slam open every safe deposit box he could. Cramming everything shiny into the bag. He avoided Crestix and electronics those could be tracked. After tens of thousands of Nguyen worth of gems had been thrown into the bag, Bend found a slightly more interesting haul. Hey, they got a painting up against the wall here. Old as all hell. Beardy guy. Looks distinguished. 1800s, it guess. Will it fit in the duffel bag? Ben placed his gloved hands on either side of the painting, gauging its size. Negative. I could probably carry it by hand, though, it looks like it's got a special carrying case stored in the deposit box linked to the same account. Think it's worth anything? Looking out the back window, Dervish gawked. Guys? Wildcard didn't notice him. Go ahead and take the painting, bend. We've got the time. Guys? Wildcard snapped briefly back into reality to see Dervish pointing at a grey van parking a few spots down from them. Oh fuck. Men in ballistic vests and Wells Fargo uniforms with submachine guns stepped out of the van. Dervish began to go for his gun, but Geppetto hissed at him to not make any moves yet. The tension was broken as one of the Wells Fargo employees cracked some kind of joke, and another laughed. Backup had been called, but this was probably a regular thing. Maybe the shoddy eye in one of the Dobermans had caught something. The team wasn't found yet. But they would be, since two of the men were actively making for the back door. Fucking hell. Bend. Get out of there. Bend hefted his bag and the portrait case, but the two men made it to the door before he could make it out of the vault. Oh fuck. Fuck wait. Instinctively, Wildcard backdoored back into the Spider Nexus and removed the headphone hardware synchronization software. And, in an instant, the entire bank began reverberating with the sounds of interracial fetish porn. Ben asked over the comms, meekly. What did you just do? Showered in cries of ecstasy and a tasteful background soundtrack consisting mostly of oont soont soonts, both of the guards recoiled, startled and then walked past the slightly open vault of the spider room, not noticing the intruder. As they peered into the spider room, snickering loudly, Wildcard yelled over the comms. This is your opening, Bend. Cut across into the bank offices, then take the other back door. Bend made a mad sprint for the bank offices right before the other members of the TAC team came through the hallway door to check out what the ruckus was in the spider room. With a quick jerk, Wildcard disengaged a cord and reeled it back into the car. Bend abandoned all pretense of stealth and sprinted past the Wells Fargo van into the back seat of the car. Buckle up, everyone. And, as an alarm sounded inside the bank, Wildcard wiped his sedan from the parking lot records and then disappeared into the streets at high speed. That's what I've got thus far but I don't want to have to post from this crappy little device if I actually have to type it out. If the thread's still up later when this ban bullshit gets resolved I'll continue on to the next story, featuring politics, dating, Sasquatches, and cyber zombies. As the team merged off the freeway into Tacoma, they went over the loot, aside from the bonds. 
a sack full of gems and jewelry and a portrait of a distinguished looking man circa sometime in the middle of the 19th century. Deciding offloading the goods sooner rather than later was probably for the best. Bend and Dervish hit up Brianna for any experts who could identify the painting while Geppetto and Wildcard plumbed their mob contacts for a reputable jeweler. The portrait was quickly identified with some cursory searching around on Brianna's part. It was the gubernatorial portrait of Leland Stanford, the first Republican governor of California, director of Wells Fargo ironically, and founder of Stanford University. It had been stolen from a Sacramento archive a few years back and the bounty was 20,000 Nguyen. Bend was very happy with this development, as returning an important, historic piece of art to its rightful owner almost balanced out robbing a small town of all of its valuables. Wildcard and Geppetto were directed to Vincent Valici, nephew of Wildcard's fixer Luca, widely reputed to be the best jeweler in the Gianelli family, but also the worst. Wildcard asked Luca. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Luca had responded. Well, he is very good at identifying jewels. Out of character, Vinny the Grin Valici was an old player character of mine from a Shadow Run game long past. He was a dick. I was very happy to see him return in a bit role that was extraordinarily appropriate for him. But I digress. The team made their way to Grin in Vinny's pawn shop in Auburn. The sign out front read, Our prices are so low, they are criminal Geppetto sighed loudly as he passed by the two armed men in suits out front. Not exactly subtle, is he? Vincent Valici was a guido of the highest order, with an awful tanning salon tan, manicured nails practically obscured by ostentatious gold rings. An open-chested polo shirt with a suit jacket thrown haphazardly over it, and a dyed, greasy mop on his head that resembled the ass end of a bird more than human hair. The only sign of actual violence on his person was a thin half Glasgow grin running out of the left side of his mouth and up his cheek, doubtless the source of his name. My friends. Brothers. Good to see Zias. My uncle told me you'd be coming. Now let's get a looks at them goods, you know? The team began regretting this referral. When Bend opened the bag of gems, Vinny literally snatched forward and grabbed the entire bag out of his hand, pouring it out on the table before slapping on a pair of magnifying air shades. Oh, this is some good stuff, he absently commented as he went through the various rocks and pieces of jewelry. Surveying each carefully but then tossing them into a small pile whenever he finished, you got at least 15k in here, good haul. Geppetto smiled. Excellent. We'll take the 15,000, then. There was a pause as he made eye contact with the jeweler, and then Vinny broke out in a tinny giggle that swiftly devolved into a full-blown belly laugh. Oh shit, Yas was serious? Get a load of this guy. He looked between each of the team members as though expecting them to be equally incredulous about Geppetto's request. I can give you 5k maybe. There's no profit in this for me. But it's jewelry. Most of this is raw. And most of it is stolen. At Grin and Vinny's we sell reputable goods. Geppetto glared at Vinny. I'm walking if we don't get a full 10 grand. Without skipping a beat, Vinny reposted. 9. Geppetto continued to glare. 9500. 9250. 9400. 9300. 9350. 9350 but I want your tie. Geppetto looked down at his tie, irate. Are you serious? Nah, I'm just joshing you. But seriously, 9325. The difference at this point isn't enough to cover a dinner. Are we really going to keep arguing this? Vinny crossed his arms. I eat large desserts. Final offer. Fine. Fuck you. Devish took a moment to retract his cyber blades. He had instinctively deployed them for some reason. Pleasure doing business with Yas. Here's your cash. The boys will see you out. Looking at his three glowering teammates, Ben offered. Hey, at least we did a good deed. He shut up a six evil eyes turned his way. I'm beginning to think that my Buddhist tenet of abandoning material possessions may conflict with my choice of profession. Shadow Run Story Time 11 End. If you haven't already check out my Redbubble portfolio, you might just find something you like. Just stop. Just stop it. Stop. No. Just stop it. It's time to stop!